case. All right, Scott, thank you. I want to bring in Tim Parlatori because he served as a Trump attorney for a brief period but left due to differences with Trump advisor Boris Epstein. Mr. Parlatori joins us now. And, Tim, thank you for joining us. First, I want to start with you. I'm, I'm sure you have read through this indictment. What do you think is the gravest threat to Donald Trump included here? You know, reading through this indictment, it actually was kind of surprising to me um, how little work Jack Smith had really done on this case to properly put together the required elements. This case, you know, most of the facts are und undisputed because they happened out in public. The one key fact that, that they have to get over is knowledge. Did he know at the time that the claims of fraud were false? Did he know at the time that he'd actually lost the election? And reading the indictment, there really wasn't anything in there to indicate that Jack Smith had done his homework on that. Everything in there just, it said, you know, he was told by Tim, some people there was Tim, fraud. Tim, he Tim. was told by other people there wasn't. Tim, Who reading, should he have Tim, I, I just happen to have it right here, page seven. So if you're following along at home, the claims were false and the defendant knew they were false. In fact, the defendant was notified repeatedly that his claims were untrue, often by the people of whom he relied on for candid advice. A, the defendant's vice president. B, the senior leaders of the Justice Department. C, the director of national intelligence. D, the Department of Homeland Security, Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. E, senior White House attorneys. Let me just turn now to page eight. F, senior staffers on the defendant's 2020 election campaign. G, state legislatures and officials, many of whom uh, were the defendant's political allies. And H, state and federal courts, the neutral arbiters. So what are you saying that he didn't do his homework? It's laid out here, I'm A saying, through I'm H. Saying, I'm, I'm saying that that is something that looks great on paper, looks great in an indictment, and falls totally flat once you put it into a courtroom, because you have to have every single one of those people come in and testify about that. And they have to all be cross-examined. And so you go right down that list, every single one of them, Bill Barr is going to have to come in there and testify that, yes, he told President Trump that there was no evidence of fraud, but then he's going to be cross-examined. How many agents did you have go out and investigate? How many man hours were expended on that? How many witnesses did you interview? Did you send anybody to look at the machines? What did you do to actually verify any of these claims. Did you even sit with Mr. Giuliani to see what he was telling the president that you needed to go and verify? And the answer to those questions, when it comes to Barr, is going to be no to every single one of them. And so if you can't show that the people that are telling him there's no fraud had actually done an investigation, had actually done the work and could back it up by anything other than, no, we're not going to investigate because we don't think that there's fraud, then when it comes to a jury, who has to find beyond a reasonable doubt that he knew, that's going to totally die. Again, it looks great in an indictment, but it dies in front of a jury. The former Attorney General Bill Barr has said publicly on television, so I'm sure he would say it in a courtroom, that he did look into the claims and found no proof of election fraud. And if he's subjected to actual questioning by an attorney during cross-examination, that's going to actually dig beneath the surface, not just accept those statements at face value, dig in to find out the details. I think that you're all going to be very surprised at what Mr. Barr has to say. Tim Parlatori, thank you for joining us. Want to bring in uh, Ricky Kleeman. And uh, Ricky, is there a counter argument that you'd like to make? Yes, there is a counter argument. First of all, I think that the indictment is a narrowly drawn, very pointed look at each of the crimes to satisfy each element of each offense charge. There is no doubt in my mind that Jack Smith has already written his closing argument when this indictment was drafted, because you have to look at the result when you look at the beginning. And Jack Smith has taken into consideration each witness that he is going to call, understanding that his burden is proof beyond a reasonable doubt, and understanding that they will be cross-examined. I have no doubt that Jack Smith can prove his case. 
whether or not he can prove it to the satisfaction of a jury beyond a reasonable doubt is not for me to say. It's for a jury to say. But with all due respect to Tim, I do not think this is an indictment that is so bare that he cannot prove it. Also want to bring in former federal prosecutor Scott Fredrickson. And, and Scott, um, I just didn't understand the argument that Tim was making. And I am not a lawyer, but I've read the indictment. And there's multiple, which I just read on the air, instances where apparently uh, the special counsel has lined up a lot of evidence. Yeah, I'm, I'm mystified. And frankly, uh, the kind of cross-examination that was suggested by uh, Tim, with all due respect, is kind of uh, fundamental 101 for prosecutors and defense counsel. Uh, that's walking into a trap, and Bill Barr will hit it out of the park and tell him about how uh, they did have agents out in the field, and they did investigate, and they looked at video. Um, They'll have evidence from each one that you listed there. That's there's not going to be any problem having them show up and testify at trial. And there'll be evidence of a, of a respected private company that the president hired to look into the fraud, and they found nothing. Um, that, I think, will be part of the overwhelming evidence you see. And by providing that evidence, that destroys the advice of counsel defense as well. You know, advice of counsel has to be based on true facts. It can't be based on false facts, manipulated facts, which is what this big steal argument was all about. And the president was told, not only by his attorney general, but top DOJ officials, his own White House counsel, the head of national intelligence, the head of cybersecurity, his family, his chief of staff, his top campaign officials. You know, when they get done testifying, uh, I don't think the defense is, is going to want to get up and do any cross-examination. They're going to have to think of a different defense. And just to build on what Scott Fredrickson said, for Mr. Parlatori to suggest that it was the responsibility of the attorney general to be the overseer of all claims of election fraud, uh, Scott mentioned Chris Krebs, who was running the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency for the Trump administration, a Trump appointee. And nine days after the election in 2020, Krebs issued a statement along with his agency saying, quote, there is no evidence that any voting system deleted or lost votes change votes or was in any way compromised. And this came as people who are named as likely co-conspirators, not named, but suggested as co-conspirators in this indictment, like Sidney Powell, were saying that there was foreign influence in this election. Trump's own appointees and officials, separate from anything the Justice Department was doing, said this election was as secure as any in history. There's a mountain of evidence mm -hmm. that the election was not stolen, and, and, um, and, uh, and people who were Republicans that said it and investigated it, including multiple court cases. This is, at this point, undisputed other than in the political realm. I mean, yeah, absolutely. And it happened in real time. I mean, this isn't these aren't details that were somehow uncovered by Jack Smith. We heard from Bill yeah. Barr publicly in real time. We heard from Chris Krebs publicly in real time. We heard from secretaries of state publicly in real time that there was no fraud that they uncovered in this election. And as Scott mentioned, the courts took a look too. Mm -hmm. the system for adjudicating these claims looked at them and the president was shut out, in, which is to say he lost all of the cases. Mm -hmm. Let's bring in Democratic Congressman and former January 6th committee chair Benny Thompson. He joins us now. And, Mr. Chairman, thank you for joining us. Your committee did extensive work on what happened on January 6th. Much of that was referred to the Justice Department. I haven't had the chance to speak with you, but as you've read through this indictment, what stuck out to you? Well, a lot of it was the body of work our January 6th committee uncovered. Uh, we talked to people all over the country, election officials, 